Welcome, and thank you for attending the first in a series of CalOR implementation trainings, CalOR 101. Today's training finds us embarking on an exciting new endeavor, the CalWORKs Outcomes and Accountability Review. It has taken two years of extensive collaborative efforts to arrive at this point. Along the way, the CalOR development team has explored the limits of what is possible, viable, and appropriate to incorporate into CalOR. However, the overall purpose of CalOR is simple, to adopt a continuous quality improvement model for the CalWORKs program. CalOR will position all of us to better understand what the CalWORKs program is doing well and celebrate it, even as we seek opportunities for innovation and improvement. Today's training is just one piece of a larger CDSS effort to provide as much information and support as we can to help ensure the CalOR implementation goes smoothly. We'll outline the full range of training support being provided at the end of today's session. For now, we just want to thank you all for taking an active role in learning more about what CalOR is and how it will benefit the CalWORKs program and the clients we serve. That said, our presenters will now briefly introduce themselves and describe their role in the CalOR development process. I'll go first. My name is David Dower, and I'm a manager in the CalWORKs Employment Bureau. My team is responsible to support CalOR training design, delivery, and coordination. Hi, everyone. My name is Natasha Nicola. I'm the CalWORKs and Child Care Branch Chief. I've been working with all the teams here to oversee and, and implement CalOR. Hello, my name is Damian Ladd. I'm Chief of the CalWORKs Employment Bureau, and I'm on the CalOR team here at DSS. Hi everyone, my name is Juliana Vinilatz and I'm the CalOR specialist here at CDSS and I've kind of worked on all things CalOR and coordinated the development effort. Great, and we all look forward to working with you throughout the CalOR implementation process. So as you can see from today's agenda, our presentation will get at some pretty broad aspects of CalOR. The goal of today's training really is to provide a basic foundational understanding of CalOR while describing both the performance measures and continuous quality improvement process. Having that shared foundational understanding will allow us to progress towards more detailed performance-based trainings around how CalOR will be operationalized. By the end of today's presentation, our objectives are that you'll be able to describe the spirit and intent of CalOR and summarize how it was developed, Recall the CalOR implementation timeline and deliverable deadlines. Explain how the CalOR performance measures were developed. Explain how CalOR performance measure data is provided to counties. And describe the components of the CalOR continuous quality improvement process. Lastly, we want to ensure you're able to identify and access additional CDSS training and support designed to help promote a successful CalOR implementation. Now, we just want to take a quick moment for you to briefly complete a pre-learning activity. The purpose is to get you thinking about what CalOR is and what you'll be learning today. This activity will help make you aware of and ensure you retain the key points of today's training. It has nine questions and should take several minutes to complete. You can find it on the CalOR website by going to the CalOR Training and Technical Assistance page, clicking on Recorded Trainings, and selecting the CalOR 101 recorded webinar link. There you can find the electronic or hard copy of the pre-learning activity, complete it, and then we'll be on our way. So now please pause for just a moment to complete the activity. Thank you. I encourage you to keep these questions in mind as we cover today's content. We'll revisit them and go over the correct answers at the end of today's session. At this time, I'll hand the mic to our brief, Damian Ladd. Damian? Thank you, David. I'm going to provide a brief overview of CalOR and its development process. As required by statute, CDSS convened a work group beginning in September 2017 to develop the structure and substance of CalOR. The work group consists of many 
stakeholders, including current and former CalWORKs clients, state agencies, county staff, advocacy groups, research teams, and the legislature. CDSS has also worked closely with Parent Voices and Mathematica Policy Research to ensure clients have a voice in the process and the CalWORK components are vetted by those with research expertise. CDSS will continue to convene the work group in the future to refine the CalWORK process, establish thresholds for the performance measures, and consider the establishment of additional performance measures. CalWORK consists of three core components. Performance measures, a CalWORKs county self-assessment process, including stakeholder engagement, and a CalWORKs system improvement plan, including a peer review component. We will dive deeper into each of these pieces throughout today's presentation. CalWORKs is structured into three-year cycles. The first three-year cycle begins July 2019 and concludes June 2022, at which point the next three-year cycle will begin. During each cycle, counties will engage in a sequential set of activities and reporting requirements, specifically a CAL-CSA, CAL-SIP, and progress report will be due each cycle. CAL-CSA is CalWORKs Self-Assessment, CAL-SIP is CalWORKs System Improvement Plan. This timeline depicts the activities from today through the end of the first three-year cycle. The timeframes for measure availability is on the top of the arrow, with general training timeframes and Cal CQI due dates superimposed on the arrow itself. Natasha will now provide an in-depth look into the spirit and intent of CalOR. Thank you so much, Damien. Before I jump into the full spirit and intent of CalOR, I just want to take a moment to thank all of you again for the hard work you've put into participating in stakeholder work groups and providing feedback on our letters and helping us to think through these performance measures. I also want to thank you in advance for all the hard work that is to come and for recognizing in advance alongside us that this is going to be a big learning curve for all of us. I want to just own and recognize up front that this process will come with some hiccups, challenges, and that we fully anticipate this will happen. So thank you for being forgiving to us at CDSS as we learn this process alongside you. Thank you for giving it your best shot and for looking to us to provide technical assistance, letting us know where there are issues and making sure that we can really truly partner with you to meet all your needs. I know it's a big brand new process. We're creating something from scratch. So I just wanna recognize how much work that's going to be, in particular given all the other work you're already completing as program changes and shifts. So that said, let's explore some of the spirit and intent behind the development of CalOR. The graphic you see on the screen here should feel familiar to most of you. I hope it captures the CalWORKs we all believe in. The graphic demonstrates equal emphasis on stability and core capabilities, as well as the classic work-related activities more commonly associated with welfare to work. There's a balance that has to be struck in addressing both. One, the need to stabilize families and provide for core capabilities and needs of individuals, as well as addressing the second piece, the advancement in education, training, and work experience. Maybe more importantly, if you look to the far right of the graphic, you'll see that what the program is designed to achieve for our participants includes a lot more than just employment. We need to have a program designed to think about long-term employment, career trajectory, managing adversity, and what it means to achieve self-sufficiency. The program design also needs to address the fact that in order to have self-sufficiency, you need both employment and resilience. I want to recognize up front that the spirit and intent of CalOR is to help all of us think through what it means to deliver a program that looks more like the image on the screen, one that really launches work-ready customers that are also resilient and know how to manage adversity while they go through any career trajectory. Before we jump deeper into the nuts and bolts of CalOR, I'm going to walk everyone through some critical program and policy insights and background. We'll start with the CalWORKs theory of change. The CalWORKs theory of change reflects the critical underpinnings and assumptions that are built into the CalWORKs program and structure of policies. An effective CalWORKs program assumes people are engaged with the program for the full duration of activities and are receiving supports from end to end in order to be successful. This is represented by a stepwise process and movement through each step in sequence. 
success in the program is then predicated on effective client engagement in that stepwise progression. Clients only progress through the CalWORKs program and succeed if they remain engaged in the program through the full duration of sequential building activities. Thus, the program and necessary engagement relies on meeting clients where they're at in a way that motivates them to engage in the program and continue engaging in the program. In summary, we know effective engagement is a necessary first step to helping participants and to decreasing sanctions. People will, move, people will be more motivated to participate when they are pursuing goals that are meaningful to them and within their reach. Executive function and self-regulation are key to long-term success and resilience. Positive, supportive relationships are key to building and modeling executive function skills. And we believe by way of CalOR, we can drive program innovation to facilitate improved engagement, increased choice and agency, and encourage executive function and self-regulation skill building through routine practice and meaningful staff interactions. Lastly, the CalWORKs of the future will use an evidence-based framework and facilitate a program environment which allows that framework to succeed. While we may all agree this is the program we've always wanted, uh, or maybe even thought we've already had, there's also been a singular outcome hanging over us for quite some time, emphasizing a very singular approach to CalWORKs. So let's take a moment now to examine how outcomes tend to drive program logic and why an updated program logic model was one of the critical first steps that our stakeholder and work group put together uh, in moving us towards the CalOR process. So what you see on the screen now is a basic model demonstrating the nature of the CalWORKs of the past. And it's a very good and simple illustration of how outcomes naturally drive actions within programs. This graphic represents the power the WPR has historically held on the CalWORKs program. If you look to the right of your screen, the WPR has been the one outcome of interest, which has meant that the only output that tended to matter to workers, programs, and development was hours. Hours specifically related to federally defined work activities, which literally placed work activities at the forefront of everyone's mind. This meant that the most program resources, clients, and client interactions were driven towards a federally defined work activity series, and thus hours in the WPR. So this serves as an important reminder to us that when we select outcomes of interest, if not all our program decisions will flow from that reality and those outcomes that were generated. This often occurs at the exclusion of other alternative outcomes, outputs, activities, or trajectories. Moving forward, a different set of outcomes will more closely reflect the range of motivations that inspire all of us to commit to this type of work to get out of bed every day and come and do this very hard but incredibly meaningful and rewarding job and to invest a lot of time and energy into trying to disrupt cycles of poverty in the state. If you look to the, this simplified logic model, you'll see that we believe we're attempting to outcome, what we're attempting to out accomplish in the program is to help clients develop skills, to succeed in job placements, and ultimately to help with the resilience piece, to overcome adversity and give clients the skills to retain jobs and re reduce returns to aid. As a result of this more comprehensive set of outcomes, WPR is, in fact, likely to increase over time, though it's no longer the outcome of interest driving all of us in our program decision making moving forward. What we'd like to see is that clients engage uh, achieve goals and progress towards higher levels of engagement and education, and yes, as an aside, meet federal participation work hours. But really the outputs that are driving our CalWORKs program, uh, our case management and structures and moving forward are helping participants be ready to uh, achieve these goals and, and be resilient over time. Recognizing that operationalizing the CalWORKs program in a world in which our dominant outcomes of interest are not reflected by WPR, the CalOR process, and in particular the derivation of performance metrics, naturally started with an updated logic model that reflects our joint vision for CalWORKs moving forward. In the CalWORKs of the future, uh, and I'll say hopefully the very near future, we believe customer needs should be reflected in quality and intentional welfare-to-work plans. We know customers soft skills to succeed and engage with the program, to manage all the complex needs within their family, to master the challenging dynamics of that work-life balance, to overcome adversity, and to succeed long-term in navigating career trajectories. How works should help develop and model all of these skills. 
An updated logic model should explain how the program can achieve an update and explicit set of outcomes of interest. We see key components of the logic model as barrier remediation and meeting family needs immediately, self-regulation, executive function skill building opportunities, customer involvement, empowering them to apply their agency, choice, and personal motivation in determining their pathway through the program, and partnerships between staff and customers, county welfare agencies in the community, and of course with the state. So what you see on the screen now is an updated CalWORKs logic model. It's also available on the DSS website where you can find suggestions the state has made on how counties can use the logic model as a tool to help update programs and think strategically about targeted efforts moving forward. You'll see from the logic model that it contains progression. There are both left to right and top to bottom progressions. This reflects back to that stepwise CalWORKs process we were discussing and how critical it is to think about both early engagement and ongoing engagement in the program as keys to success. Additionally, clients have to achieve short-term outcomes before they can achieve medium-term outcomes, and of course, before they can then achieve long-term outcomes. To accomplish that, they have to both engage in the program early, get through eligibility, verification, appraisal, et cetera, and then stay engaged in the program and actually work through the top to bottom activities and outputs. CDSS consciously aligned the Cal or measures and concepts with this logic model. In looking at the broader arrows at the top, which run from left to right, you'll see that Cal or naturally chose performance measures and processes to look at that followed the logic model. Those arrows progress from initial engagement to ongoing engagement in activities, the outputs we hope to see even while customers are still in the program, and eventually extending out to program outcomes, those that we might not see until someone's exited the program for a year or two. Outcomes which we hope will show clients have developed the resilience to overcome adversity and effectively begun a career trajectory. When considering the full scope of CalOR from the performance metrics to the county self-assessment and on through to system improvement plans, the logic model should help counties think through how CalWORKs is designed and can be updated around intended outcomes as well as how those outcomes should drive our discussion of activities and outputs. The logic model highlights that contextual factors also influence inputs and activities and recognizes that these may change depending on perspective and over time. The county self-assessment will help capture these and reflect on what they mean for our outcomes and logic model. Further, the logic model helps illustrate that while there's basic state regulatory framework in place to define some of these activities, you all at the counties really have a lot of influence over how those activities are operationalized and what outputs they're connected to. Finally, while the logic model highlights key outcomes related to poverty alleviation, counties should also work through a goal setting process internally and establish outcomes of interest specific to the county. Now we'll highlight uh, the stakeholder and state's thinking around program management and accountability. Both are aspects of CalOR, but the emphasis should really be on the importance of process measures for program management, especially in this first three-year cycle. The CalWAR legislation was asking for both an updated accountability structure and a meaningful set of metrics for program management, where WPR has helped us in the past. As such, it's important for everyone to understand that each of those is and why both are so important. With accountability, you're looking at outcomes. It's really information for the state to define and measure a program success at a very high level and across all counties. It's important to have these metrics in place so we can answer questions such as, is our funding and program design producing the intended outcomes across the state? This is really a statewide look at what the program is accomplishing and whether or not we're achieving our goals. It's not about the state holding counties accountable, but rather it's more about the state holding itself accountable to the program to the funding, and to the legislature. The process-oriented measures get into program management. This is where counties have the most agency and should feel ownership, and I would say excitement, about CalOR. This is the bulk of what counties will be focusing on and should be thinking about in making sure programs are successful moving forward. Program management, or process outcomes, are those that occur in real time, uh, that are observable in the short term, and they're actionable and easy to interpret and focus on input allocations and activity operations. These program management process measures demonstrate the key intermediate steps between inputs and those outcomes of interest. 
They represent the key areas where county implementation decisions are made that will lead to better outcomes for our clients over time. They will also assist in defining staff and program performance outputs. <clears throat> in addition to emphasizing program management over accountability, the state and stakeholders also had to consider what measures might be prioritized somehow. Because of course, as you know, you can't passively measure everything. There are way too many factors to consider and focusing on any one aspect by definition naturally leads to decreased attention paid to other aspects. So we had to be very careful here. Selecting measures must be connected to the design, data source, and ultimate use. So in doing that, we considered, is there a good way to define the measure? Is the data available to inform the measure? And, po and possibly most importantly, can the county make a meaningful decision with the data that we'll provide? Some of the specific criteria used in determining the performance measure portion of CalOR, and to some extent how the county self-assessment was defined, included the fact that performance measures, again, must be quantitative, timely, actionable, standardized, understandable, and minimally burdensome. So with that, I am going to turn over the conversation to Juliana Vinilas to walk us through the performance measures. Great, thank you, Natasha. Before exploring the color performance measures in more detail, let's take a moment to reflect on the purpose, intent, and value of having measures that align with the guidelines that Natasha just described. Why do performance measures matter? And how can updated CalWORKs performance measures help us better identify both the strengths of our program as well as areas for growth and improvement? To lead into this discussion, we're asking everyone to complete a quick five-question activity to get us thinking more about the value and purpose of performance measures. Please pause this presentation and complete either an electronic or printed copy of the myth or fact activity included on the CalOR website under the CalOR 101 training folder. Great, thank you everyone for participating. Let's go ahead and run through the questions and answers Together. Counties may use performance measures to emphasize program activities that lead to key outcomes of interest. That's a fact. A performance measurement system helps to focus our attention on important process points that are key for our outcome goals. They're used to make decisions based on anecdotal information, the myth, performance measures provide concrete data to use when making programmatic decisions. Feedback from stakeholders and anecdotal information can be verified or used to supplement performance measures. To establish a baseline by which to analyze performance. Fact, performance measure baselines give the county a basis to assess how they are doing over time and with changes. To identify the impact of program changes. Fact, performance measures give us a way to monitor if programmatic changes and improvement efforts are having the intended impact. And lastly, to make decisions in a vacuum using only performance measure information. Myth. Performance measures provide one piece of the puzzle and should always be considered in relationship with information about the local context, regulatory framework, and feedback from stakeholders. When we started developing the Calor performance measure stakeholders, we knew that we needed a better indication of how our clients and our programs are doing. WPR doesn't tell us much meaningful information about our program or about our clients. With CalOR, we'll be able to look at the things that we know are important for client success and outcome. Are clients getting the services that they need? Are they finishing school? Are their wages increasing? And counties will have a data to utilize when making program decisions. However, the measures are only one component of the puzzle and requ require analysis and detail to fully understand outcomes. That is provided through the county self-assessment process. That additional analysis should always surround interpretation of the performance measures. The package of performance measures provides a holistic view of county CalWORKs programs 
and aligns with the CalWORKs logic model. The work group was guided by certain statutory requirements. The first being that CalORB must have both process and outcome measures, and also that eight categories of measures must be included in CalORB. Participant engagement, participation, service delivery, educational attainment, employment, program exits and reentries, and family and child well-being. Finally, the work group considered the trade-offs that Natasha mentioned earlier. Some of the trade-offs we attempted to balance are how understandable measures are and if data already exists that can be utilized. During the first three-year cycle, the performance measures will be calculated and reported in a staggered manner, with only a subset of the measures included in the first CSA. The measures are organized into three groupings, existing reporting, phase one, and phase two measures. This first set of performance measures will be available in July 2019. They include employment rate of current CalWORKs individuals, wage progression, post CalWORKs employment rate, rate of exits with earnings, rate of program reentries, rate of program reentries after exit with earnings, and intergenerational CalWORKs enrollment rate, and that's a state level look only. These measures use existing data and require no new data entry from counties. Counties will be required to include these measures in the first county self-assessment. The next group of measures is referred to as the phase one measures. Like the measures on the last slide, counties will include these in the first county self-assessment. This includes the engagement rate, sanction rate, resolution rate, orientation attendance rate, OCAT appraisal completion timeliness rate, first activity attendance rate, improved literacy, basic skills, English language acquisition rate, and community college progress rate. The first six measures on this list utilize data elements currently in SAWS for county completion, so the data fields may not be used consistently or fully across counties. The measures do rely on consistent data entry, and CDSS will provide training on the data before counties are expected to implement any needed changes. The last two measures utilize data from sources outside of SAWS and require no new data entry from counties. This last group of measures is referred to as the phase two measures. And this includes OCAT appraisal to next activity timeliness rate, education and skills development access rate, education and skills development utilization rate, childcare access rates, homeless assistance and housing support program access rate, ancillary services access rate, transportation provision timeliness rate, subsidized to unsubsidized employment rate, educational completion rate, home visiting transitions to welfare to work engagement rate, and family stabilization transitions to welfare to work engagement rate. These measures utilize a mix of data elements that are currently in SAWS, as well as newly automated elements. As with phase one, these measures rely on consistent data entry, which CDSS will provide training on. Counties will not be required to include these measures in the first county self-assessment, but may optionally include any relevant and available information. The next piece on performance measures is around the establishment of baselines thresholds. For the process measures, data reported during the first three-year cycle will establish county and state baselines. And after the first cycle, target thresholds will be established in consultation with counties and stakeholders. For the outcome measures, if there is sufficient reason, statewide standards may be established. Unlike the WPR, there are no financial penalties tied to Cal or performance measures. Now we'll take a look at how the CalOR data will flow to CDSS and from whom. CDSS will be calculating all county performance measures and then providing the measures back to counties and posting the results online. A variety of sources will be used to obtain the performance measure data. SAWS will provide data files to CDSS with county client level data. CDSS will also obtain data directly from sources outside of SAWS. Then we'll combine 
to calculate the county performance measures. Counties will have a 30 day review period, and if no concerns arise, performance will be posted on the senior center. With that, we'll move on from the performance measures. But just to add a general note, that this section of slides was really intended to provide a high level overview of the Cal Board data and performance measures. Additional training will dive much deeper into this topic. With that, I'll pass it on to Damien to talk about continuous quality improvement. Thank you, Juliana. Uh, I'm here today to speak to CalWORK's continuous quality improvement, or in the context of CalOR, CalCQI. Continuous quality improvement focuses on better understanding processes and systems in order to strategically improve them through monitoring and data analysis. CQI essentially asks, how are we doing and what can be done better? As noted earlier in the presentation, CalOR continuous quality improvement is a cyclical or reoccurring process. During each Cal CQI three-year cycle, counties will conduct a county self-assessment, which includes local stakeholder engagement, develop a system improvement plan. This plan is to be based on findings from the county self-assessment, and it includes a county-to-county -county or regional peer review. Implement strategies for improvement and evaluate the success of those strategies. Report implementation and evaluation of strategies in a progress report. And the work group will revisit the performance measures and consider the establishment of additional performance measures at the end of the continuous quality improvement cycle. Looking back to the timeline presented earlier, there are three important items to reemphasize. The first, continuous quality improvement cycle starts July 2019. County self-assessments will be due to CDSS in the summer of 2020. County system improvement plans and progress report due dates will follow in 2021 and 2022. Specific due dates for each Cal CQI component will be provided to counties in the fall of 2019. Now let's take a more detailed look at each component of the process. The County Self-Assessment, or CalCSA, allows for a county to comprehensively assess its CalWORKs program, including service array, process implementation, and participant outcomes. It will assist the county in identifying the prevalence and magnitude of service need. CalCSA will include a description and analysis of county demographic information, a description of agency characteristics, including county infrastructure, community partners, and available resources. A description of the local stakeholder engagement process and received feedback. Performance measure data and system analysis. And also a description and analysis of client engagement and barrier removal services. As Juliana mentioned earlier in this presentation, for the first continuous quality improvement cycle, counties will only be required to provide an analysis of existing reporting and phase one performance measures. The system improvement plan or CalSIP allows each county to describe how it will improve its CalWORKs program performance based on the findings from the county self assessment. Each system improvement plan will include measures selected by the county for improvement. A county may focus on a single measure, multiple measures, or a grouping of related measures for improvement. It will also include a narrative of improvement strategies, related activities, and the county's plan for evaluating impact on performance, and also a report out on peer review activities, including how peer review may have impacted strategy development. Uh, please note the CalSIP must be approved by the county's Board of Supervisors or, if applicable, chief elected official prior to implementation. The progress report will provide an update on strategy implementation and evaluation results. It provides a bridge between the current and next continuous quality improvement cycle. Each progress report will include a status update on strategy implementation and evaluation activities, including a description of county successes and barriers to reaching performance goals. It will include whether the county intends to maintain the selected strategy and related activities or adjust in order to seek desired outcomes. And it will include an update on peer review activities, including whether peer review has benefited the implementation and evaluation process. 
CDSS is currently developing the following resources and tools to assist counties in the Cal CQI process. Implementing guidance, CDSS, all county letters, all county information notices, and other guidance. Cal CQI instruction manual. This will include specific instructions for Cal CQI process and is slated for release in the summer of 2019. Reporting templates will be used by counties to compile and submit the Cal CSA, Cal SIP, and progress report. The Cal CSA template will be pre-populated with county demographic and performance measure data. There will be a Cal CQI toolkit, which will include sources for use in stakeholder engagement, peer review, resource mapping, data analysis, and strategy selection and implementation. Resources will be available on a flow basis and posted to the CalOR website beginning in fall 2019. There is as well a data dashboard, which is a publicly facing data array that will offer a comprehensive look at county demographic data as well as the CalOR measures. The data dashboard became available on the CalOR website July 1, 2019. I will now hand it back over to David Dower to speak to additional upcoming CalOR trainings and to wrap up today's presentation. Thank you, Damian. Uh, in addition to all the tools CDSS is developing and releasing to support CalOR implementation, CDSS will provide training and technical support to counties utilizing a variety of formats. The provision of training and technical assistance will be timed to provide the most relevant support whatever the current CalOR implementation step is. It will consist of the following components. There's the Cal webinar series, which is a train the trainer series designed to help county staff develop a strong foundational understanding of CalOR, the CalOR performance measures, related data entry and flow, and the continuous quality improvement process components. Webinars will continue to be scheduled through the end of 2019. And all the webinars will be recorded and associated materials will be made available on the CalOR website shortly after each webinar is delivered. The December 2019 CalWorks Training Academy will also have sessions dedicated to CalOR implementation. Details about specific sessions will be shared out and also posted to the CalWorks Training Academy website as that information becomes available. There will be in-person regional trainings, which will provide performance-based learner-centered guidance for conducting county self-assessments. These regional trainings will be delivered to county staff by a third-party contractor in conjunction with CDSS in early 2020. Then there are CalOR forms, which will provide county staff an ongoing opportunity to ask questions around anything CalOR related, including webinar content, official guidance, or implementation questions. These ongoing calls will occasionally have a focused topic of discussion, such as data quality assurance, the CalOR peer review process, and et cetera. They're scheduled for the second and fourth Wednesday every month from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Lastly, there will be one-on-one -on -one support. This ongoing technical assistance and coaching will be provided throughout the CalOR cycle in a structured way, as well as on an ad-needed basis. CDSS staff are also available to help coach counties through the Cal Continuous Quality Improvement Process and report development. Overall, CDSS staff are very open to additional ideas for how we can best support you throughout CalOR, CalOR implementation. So please contact us with any suggestions. We'd now like to revisit our pre-learning activity reflect on what we've covered today and reinforce the key messages of this presentation. For those of you watching the recorded webinar, please pause this recording to review your initial responses, make any corrections based on what you've learned during this presentation, and then we'll go over the correct answers shortly. Okay. That should be enough time. Let's go ahead and review the answers together. Number one, which of the following is not a purpose of CalOR? The answer is B, to provide a one-time look at county's CalWork program. As we should all know by now, CalOR is ushering in a culture of continuous quality improvement, 
in an ongoing process of celebrating county successes while continually looking for ways to learn, innovate, and improve. Next question, which of the following did not inform the final selection of calorie performance measures? The answer to this one is D. How can we measure every area of interest in CalWORKs? While we explored a wide range of possible measures in developing our final list, it's just not possible to measure and report on everything. Some possible measures do not have data available or are easily quantifiable. Others weren't actionable or able to be standardized across the site. The final list of measures that was chosen met all the criteria that was discussed earlier in today's presentation. So true or false, CDSS will calculate all county performance measures. That one is true. All calorie performance measures will be calculated by CDSS, utilizing data from counties provided by the SAWS consortia, and for certain measures, a data match with state level agencies and databases. When data outside of the SAWS is needed, CDSS will obtain that data directly. True or false, counties must include all performance measures in their first county self-assessment. That is false. During the first three-year cycle, the performance measures will be calculated and data will be made available in a staggered manner, time for automation and county process changes. Counties will not be required to report on many of the measures, those that were termed the phase two measures, during this first Cal county self-assessment process. True or false, performance measure standards or target thresholds will be established for each process measure following the first calorie cycle. That's true. After the first cycle, target thresholds will be established for each of the process measures in consultation with counties and stakeholders. And if there's sufficient reason, statewide standards may be established for one or more outcome measures. Next question, the calorie continuous quality improvement process will not include which of the following? The answer to that is E, state audits. The state's role in CALOR has been to facilitate its design and development to provide the training and support needed for counties to successfully implement it, and ultimately to collaborate with counties as partners in this overall culture of continuous quality improvement. True or false? All counties will be required to submit a county self-assessment on January 2020. This one was a little tricky. The answer is false. Uh, counties will be organized into cohorts for reporting purposes. Report due dates will be assigned by cohort. So the first cohort will submit their county self-assessment to CDSS on July 1st, 2020. But not all counties will be required to submit at the same time. And note that that, that date was July 1st, 2020 for the first cohort. So true or false, after counties submit a county assessment and system improvement plan, they're not required to submit any other calorie reports until the second calorie cycle begins in 2022. This is false. Counties will provide an update on how their improvement strategies are working and progress they're making in the progress report. I will now go ahead and close out today's presentation. So, I'd like to thank everyone for your time and participation. We, as we mentioned earlier, during this first calorie cycle, we'll be learning together, adapting and adjusting as we go. CDSS is committed to this process of collaborating, reflecting, and innovating together. So we're trying to make both our staff and as many resources as possible available to you. To contact CDSS and for more information, you may email any questions and suggestions you have to the calorie inbox. CDSS has several staff monitoring the inbox and will respond to emails within 48 hours. The Calor website is also a great resource. It houses all Calor tools, guidance, and trainings, including PowerPoints, recorded webinars, handouts, and activities. If you haven't already done so, you may want to consider adding it to your favorite bar. Lastly, CDSS staff is available to answer any questions through the ongoing Calor forums that I mentioned earlier. So overall, we're all very excited to start the CALOR implementation process and to support you throughout. We look forward to working with you and we look forward to celebrating all your many successes 
as well as identifying what areas we might innovate and improve for a better CalWORKs for the future, for the sake of our clients and all of those who we serve. Thank you again.